All right, so real quick, I'm going to show you a little trick with machine tools, and you can actually use the grouping system to help you get into Substance Painter and create objects faster. So watch this, all right? Here we have a high and a low poly base object. We have a high and a low poly bolt, okay? These are already UV mapped, the low polys. And I just want to go ahead and demonstrate how this works. So if you select the high and the low poly base, press Control G, you will do a group. And it looks something like this. Now you can set the location down here, and I usually just set it to active. So my high and my low polys usually have the same origin point. And um, with that in mind, so we have group 001 there. We can also select this bolt here and do the same thing, right? So Control G. Just make sure one of them is an active object, so we'll place the, um, the origin point, or the uh, empty here, the group. All right, so those groups you can't see by default, so just keep that in mind. You'll have to click right in the dead center of it in order to select it by group. Otherwise, you'll select the mesh, and you'll just move either the high or the low poly. And uh, But you can turn on the empty up here with this little eye icon, and so now you can easily select those and move them around. Cool, right? All right, gets a little bit better. Here we go. Um, we're going to select this group down here. I'm going to select it with the outliner. It's easier. But um, we can go ahead and press Shift-D. And uh, if you have machine tools, hit Shift and forward mouse button. You can do uh, surface snapping or just base, medium point, and align rotation to target. Got to have the object selected to see rotation to target usually. Um, but you can hit Control while moving. And so when you duplicate something, you move it like so. So you press Shift-D. Hold control, snap, right? Shift D, control, snap. Just like that, all the way around. And so that one probably should be a little bit bigger, but you can do this very quickly. This is where it gets fun because now we set all that out. Um, you might, you know, be like me, you want to put a bunch of greebles on an object and then bake them out and not have to go and line up a low poly or recreate low polys for all those high polys. This is where it really shines because right now we're looking at all these different groups and believe it or not, a lot of people don't know this, but we have hex underscore high and hex underscore low, but it has 0 .003 added to it, right? This still works in Substance Banner. You don't have to worry about the 0 .003. So what we can do now is we can come up here and search. We can search for low or high it'll pull up this list. However, we have all these empties in the way. If we select one of these, right, or select all of these, it selects those empties, and because we're selecting the empties, it, of course, selects the other part there, the high poly. So we can't do anything with this because it's all unified still. Um, so what we can do instead is come up to this little guy, go down to the bottom, select empties here, uncheck it, and now we can select from the outliner, press A, we can select all of the, um, the low poly mesh here. So we can take that low poly mesh and go into UV editing, go into edit mode, and create an atlas or whatever the case may be. And now uh, we can go ahead and whoop, let's let's try that again. Now what we can do is just select it all, hit Control S if you have the save pie on, or go to um, file export and export the FBX file. Just make sure you're doing these selected objects only. So whatever is selected in your outliner will get exported. And then, of course, you can go and you can do the same thing for the high, right? So now you have all these. You can go ahead and export that as well, right? To get back to where you were, just turn empties back on. Exit out of the search result there. Turn that collection back on anyways. And uh, so we'll be back to kind of where we started for the most part, except we have all these guys kind of floating out here in space. Of course, you can do other modifications if you wanted, if you wanted to try to apply... Um, rotation and scale and all that fun stuff before exporting you could. Uh, so what ends up happening is you end up going to Substance Painter. And I've already did all this, so um, I just want to point a couple things out. You can see that that mesh, conven or that mesh naming convention still works. This is the ambient occlusion. I baked it, and there's no ambient occlusion baked into this with it, right? So they're not casting shadow on one another. Um, nonetheless, the way this works in the uh, baked mesh maps area is you have to go through and find all these little areas that say match, match, mesh by name, all right? And they're going to pop up in different areas. So I think under um, ambient occlusions one, so by mesh name here, curvature by mesh name, and uh, thickness as well by mesh name. So that's how you can separate those, and it more or less bakes separately based by that mesh name. Um, or what people used to call exploding your mesh, right? 
you used to have to separate things physically and then bake it, but uh, now you don't really have to because of that. So anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. I'll check you out in the next one. All right. Take care.